All right, so here's the deal. I was asked by somebody, essentially, what would be the car that they should have gotten as a disabled person. What I think is interesting about this whole conundrum, whole issue, is that the expectation that you should buy a muscle car as a disabled person, like, why would you do that? You know what I mean? Like, this, you're going to have to work on it all the time. The carburetor is going to be a pain in the butt. Like, why, why would you do that? So then he was like, well, why, what would you, blah, 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 blah. So I went to ChatGPT and I said, well, so what should the disabled, what should they do in buying a car, right? And it said, okay, well, here's the factors you should look at. Accessibility features, adaptability, comfort and convenience, visibility and maneuverability, safety features, fuel efficiency and operation costs, right? And then uh, reliability and reputation, reputation i think reliability is a little more important than that and then test drive and consultation so that's what they said was essentially important now let's get let's skip that bs and get to the good stuff real quick all right then i asked specifically google and their ai what would make the best car for the disabled and here <laughs> here's the list of vehicles that it came up with are you guys ready for this all right number one uh, let's see what we got here. So the best car for the disabled person depends on their individual needs, right? So do they need like a specialty van? Do they need something that's low to the ground to be able to get into, etc.? Some vehicles that are common for disabled people include lowered floor minivans or SUVs, such as those made by Chrysler, Dodge, Honda, Chevrolet, and Toyota. These vehicles allow people with mobility challenges to travel without transferring from their wheelchair. Some cars that are easy to get in and get out of include the following. Dodge Grand Caravan, a spacious seven-seater minivan, <laughs> right? Okay. Honda CRV, a versatile SUV with a spacious interior, wide doors, and low step-in height. Infinity Q70, a mid-size luxury vehicle with lots of leg and headroom. A Dodge Charger, a full-size vehicle with ample room to get in and out of with ease. Okay. Now, here are some additional cars that would be good for disabled people, too. This is from Google AI. A Chevrolet Silverado. Okay, so just, just to be fair, what disabled person needs a Chevy Silverado? Let's just, like, what job is that person going to? And I almost said, what job is he going to? I should have just stuck with that. But seriously, what disabled person is going to need a Chevy Silverado unless they live in Alaska and their impairments are purely mental? And not physical, because if you're loading up that truck all the time to actually pay for that bed and pay for the reduction of mileage from having that tailgate up, uh, I don't know. I don't know. That doesn't sound good to me. Toyota Scion XB, Chrysler Pacifica, Toyota Sienna, Jeep Grand Cherokee, Ford Mustang Mach-E. Ford Mustang Mach-E? But what in the hell is it? How the hell is a disabled person going to afford that? Like, what? What, what are we talking about? How is this even possible? Like, what, what, how would a Chevy Silverado and a Ford Mustang Mach-E ever make it on this list? That makes no sense whatsoever. All right. Some other cars, Ford C-Max, Mercedes-Benz V-Class, and Volkswagen Caddy. When negotiating the price of a car, you should base your deal on the total price. Oh, my God. Look, look, guys, let me tell you how to do this. All right. There are essentially three vehicles. There are three vehicles the disabled should buy, okay? These are the options. Number one, if you're a disabled person and you need to go to medical here, medical there, medical here, medical there, you buy a small RV. doesn't have to be an Atlas. doesn't have to be an Eris. doesn't have to be any of that jazz. But you buy a small drivable RV. That way, when you have to go to this specialty best hospital in the world, you can drive your butt there and drive back and you can sleep in different areas going to and from on the highway. That's number one. Number two, a minivan or van that allows you to use ambulatory devices to get in and out of it. Okay. In and out of it. That's your number two vehicle. So you got a small RV, you got your van and number three, number three, you buy a 2010 to 2015 era Prius. Some of you will say that's a terrible idea. Let me explain to you why it's not. I bought a Prius in 2010. My 2010 Prius has had its battery replaced two times. Sorry, two times. Let me explain how this works. All right. What you do is, because what goes on Priuses are their, are their batteries, right? Here's what you do. Okay. You buy a used Prius. 
Cool? Awesome. Make sure the mileage isn't crazy, but they're, they're Toyotas. They're very resilient, great reputation, very safe. They're made out of plastic parts and widgets, but they're good at what they do. They're good at what they do. They are reliable. You buy a Prius, okay? Then you keep in mind that when the battery goes, you go to this Green Bean website like I did, right here, Green Bean website, and you call them up and you pay them $2,000 to have a lifetime battery put into it. That way, you can drive that sucker for the rest of your life. Paint is peeling like it is on mine, and every time that battery goes to the shitter, you go ahead and call them up and say, hey, buddy, get over here real quick and replace my battery. I just had my battery replaced on Tuesday. I drove it around on Wednesday to the homeless shelter to work with the homeless. Paint is peeling off of it. My Prius looks disgusting. It looks like it's been through a zombie war that could only take place in Florida. Yeehaw. And the bottom line is that thing's going to keep running. It just is what it is. So the bottom line is, the bottom line, those are your three cars that you want. Now, all vehicles right now are stupid expensive. That's because of poor choices on behalf of the White House when it comes to handling the economy, when it comes to handling fuel. There's a lot of bad stuff going on. And then you have mega corporations taking advantage of it. It's not, it's not a good thing. You have rich people getting richer and the White House playing along a little bit. So the, the bottom line is this. Car prices will or should or maybe will come down. Who knows? We, we could have more inflation. I mean, they just came out with the new numbers uh, above 3%, which I wasn't expecting, You know, which is total BS. Because when you're seeing 3%, it's more like you know 10 to 15% in real world, right? So the bottom line is, Small RV, if you got to drive places, get medical treatment. Van with easy access built into it for disabled people. And there's lots of, there's lots of things out there where you can get a grant or, or the VA programs are the best. God, they give you a chunk of money for one of those. Next one is a Prius. Those are your three best vehicles. Why choose a Prius? Because as a disabled person, you don't haul stuff ever. You just don't. You haul groceries, but that's not hauling. That's not hauling. You haul friends and family, and they fit in the Prius just fine. If they don't, it's cool, man. It's great for mileage. You just go to where you're going to go, and you drive back and get the rest of them. It's okay. You're saving money. It's literally super cheap. You get 45 to 55 miles per gallon. Most of these other cars are at 20 to 25. The Prius, that's the way to go. All right, and then get that green bean. When, when the battery goes out, you look up green bean just like I did. Just like I did. You pay $2,000. do not pay the, the other option when I was doing it was $1,500, not $1,700 and something. And you only get, let me see, hold on, hold on. Let me see, let me see what this thing is real quick. Hold on. Standard coverage for $1,724. Uh, let's see what the, comes with free mobile installation. Yeah, that's the thing. You don't even have to touch it. The guy comes out with a little van and does his stuff. Uh, batteries covered by our standard green bean warranty. Optional lifetime warranty upgrades available. I think it's for three years. I think that's for three years. It says G3P, but I think it's for, th yeah, three-year warranty right there. Three-year warranty. Don't, don't waste your time with that. Don't spend $1,724 on three years. You go ahead and you pay the $2,000 and you drive that Prius until the wheels fall off. And then you put the wheels back on and you keep driving that Prius. You just keep driving it. They love abuse as Priuses go. Those Priuses, I have towed with my Prius many times that they will, they will handle just fine. All right. Now, of course, tomorrow will break and then, you know, poof of smoke. But bottom line is those are your three vehicles. I'll catch you in the next video. I need about, uh, I need about, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes, 10 minutes to kind of relax, prepare myself. Because remember, a lot of you guys, when you call during the live, you're like, hey, I've got this question that can't be answered anywhere. I've asked four attorneys already and they couldn't help me. But you being stuck on this live with me calling in, you're going to answer it. That's, that's what happens. So I'm going to take a little five to 10 minute break, relax a little bit. Then I'll prep for the live. We'll go live, and then we'll basically begin the process of answering questions. Catch me in about 10 minutes. Please remember to like, subscribe, go to Google, and type in Disability Resolution Florida or Disability Resolution Law Firm, and I will catch you guys there. Have a wonderful, wonderful night, but I will see you in about 10 minutes during the live. Catch you later. All right, bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.